With people no longer flying or even driving nearly as much because of coronavirus, oil demand is completely falling off a cliff, leading to a situation where now the price is also completely falling off a cliff, down nearly two-thirds since the beginning of 2020. And you can see here, OPEC and has really been trying to work, US, Saudi Arabia, basically everyone around the world has been trying to work together to try to figure out how we're going to cut production in order to you know make sure that the price of oil does not completely fall off a cliff. Because the situation we're looking at right now, quite frankly, is where a number of countries will simply not be able to produce oil at market value, leading to a situation where entire nations may not be able to produce oil in the coming future as oil bit, uh, you know, oil companies just basically go out of business, including here in the United States. So there's been a real rush among OPEC and OPEC Plus, uh, OPEC Plus to try to really resolve this situation. Now, over the weekend, we had a final resolution come together where OPEC Plus has agreed, basically 23 countries have agreed that they're going to be withholding 9.5 7 million barrels of oil per day from the market, which is nearly 13% of the world's production. So it seems like a significant cut, though we're going to get to whether or not it's going to be a significant cut. United States, Canada, and Brazil are also agreeing to withhold anywhere between 4 and 5 million barrels a day of oil also from the market. Although in the case of Canada, it's a little bit different. They're arguing that uh, it's going to be you know more so done through the free market and not through explicit demands. Although we're also right now talking about Texas. The state of Texas is trying to now uh, excuse me, um, a number of companies in the state of Texas are trying to negotiate with the state of Texas, trying to get the Texas Railroad Commission, uh, uh, trying to get the Texas Railroad Commission to basically force these cuts among oil companies. But some oil companies in Texas are disagreeing, saying, no, we don't want you to force us to do cuts. And so whether or not Texas is going to be doing additional cuts on top of the sort of United States cuts in order to prop up the you know prices further, we're going to have to see how that one plays out. Um, we're looking at both uh, Pioneer Natural Resources and Parsley Energy saying that they wanted a cut with some other companies in Texas saying that they did not want a cut overall. Donald Trump got, went on Twitter here to sort of gloat a little bit about this negotiation here uh, because he actually did have a pretty big role when it came to finally settling the negotiation. He said here, quote, having been involved in the negotiations, to put it mildly, the number of OPEC plus is looking to cut is 20 million a day, a day not the 10 million, which is generally being reported. If anything near this happens, the world uh, gets back to business from the COVID-19 disaster and the energy market will be strong and far faster than it is currently anticipated. Uh, basically here, he's saying that the actual number here is 20 million a day, not 10 million a day. Now, technically, that's not true because uh, the number which OPEC plus is cutting is 9.7. But what he's saying is that it's 20 million. Basically, if you actually sort of combine the oil cuts from all the other countries who are not involved in OPEC plus with the cuts from OPEC plus, it does get a little bit closer to that 20 million number, which Donald Trump is, uh, you know, sort of saying Donald Trump is reporting on. But we can see here what we've seen here. Uh, this is basically the oil markets for today. Um, the numbers are still sliding. The numbers are still falling off a cliff quite a bit. Uh, and the reason for that, this is just for WTI, and the reason for that is because uh, most investors are in agreement that these cuts are not sufficient. So they actually are aware of, you know, Donald Trump, uh, you know, the, the fact that overall the markets are being closer to 20 million, probably about 17 million uh, a day being withheld from the market, including the other sort of non-OPEC plus members. Um, but overall, it's generally in agreement that it, the cuts are not uh, sort of sufficient. So the situation right now has been that a number of countries which are not able to produce oil at market value are essentially basically like filling up their basically either their strategic petroleum reserve in the case of the United States or basically trains and oil tankers. And, you know, there's literally videos of trains that are completely filled with oil right now that are literally just driving in circles because they need to put more trains on the tracks in order to, you know, just like keep things moving in order to keep filling up these reserves with oil. And we're only about two to three weeks away right now from the situation where that oil, like literally every space in the world that could be filled with oil will be filled with oil. And then that means, of course, that those that amount of oil comes dumping onto the market. And most analysts are saying that if that happens, we're looking at single digit prices for barrel of oil, which will mean, again, that entire countries will be wiped out domestically. And most analysts are saying that the OPEC cuts are not sufficient to meet the coronavirus demands, uh, demand drop. You can see here oil slides with investors expected. Um, 
uh, oil slides with inventories expected to keep rising. Uh, most uh, most people are saying that uh, the big uh, you know the big deal to cut oil production may not be big enough. Now you may think of that and be like, well, how is that possible, right? Because I mean, you know, 13% cut. I mean, but the problem is the demand loss is more than 13%. And the reason why, by the way, it's so hard to get people to come to an agreement on cutting oil production is it's not so simple. It's actually not even just oh we have to lay off some people. It's actually millions and millions of dollars to restart production once you slow down on production. You have to replace things, you have to, you know, sort of redo things, and it's incredibly expensive, so nobody wants to do it, right? And that's why it's so difficult to sort of negotiate this thing, because everyone thinks that somebody else should be the one sort of taking the brunt of the cuts, right? Uh, so Saudi Arabia and Russia, though, and most of sort of OPEC Plus are the ones who are taking the, ma the sort of vast majority of the brunt of this thing, but, you know, sort of going back to Donald Trump's involvement in the negotiations, part of the issue with sort of the hiccup, I, I should say, when it came to the negotiations um, over the weekend and in Thursday and Friday of last week was Mexico really wasn't on board with any cuts and initially saying no. And then they came back saying 100,000 barrels a day was the you know, best they would do, which wasn't what everyone wanted. Well, Donald Trump got involved and basically said that America would, you know, that we would do additional cuts sort of in a sense to make up for Mexico, Mexico's refusal to cut. Um, and that, you know, so that then the deal could, you know, sort of move forward um, with OPEC. So that's how sort of Donald Trump was involved in this thing. And, you know, certainly, you know, some deal is better than no deal, but we, it, it really does look like, you know, as I was saying in my last video on this topic, we've just kind of bought some time. We've bought you know, maybe two weeks or three weeks, but it does look like there's going to need to be another deal if we don't want a situation where all the excess supply is flooding onto the market. Because again, we have so much excess supply right now. It's not like, oh, there are, you know, there's still plenty of space left to fill up with oil. Those spaces that exist are nearly full already because we've been dealing with this situation for weeks and weeks and weeks right now, right? So those spaces already being full, there's not a ton of reserve space left. We only have a few weeks left possibly. So we may have earned, you know, again, a few weeks, but you know, how long is that really going to last? We're going to have to see, will additional cuts come? Hopefully, right, if we want to keep, uh, you know, if we want to make sure that, you know, domestic oil prices and uh, domestic oil production aren't completely wiped out, hopefully there will be additional cuts. And we're going to have to look closely at the state of Texas and possibly North Dakota as well, whether or not their states will administer additional cuts, um, uh, you know, sort of on top of what's going on um, to try to, uh, you know, really curtail or, or excuse me, to really prop up, uh, prop up oil prices. So we'll have to see how this thing goes and how it plays out. So anyway, that's the video. If you liked it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks.